Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to turn a photo into a grunge rock poster effect in Photoshop. Now this particular effect depends solely on the photo that you begin with. The photo that you begin with must be dramatically lit or else the effect will not look as dramatic. Uh, to give you an example, here is a photograph of a singer guitarist on stage. It looks like it's pretty well lit, but when you use this effect, it doesn't doesn't really look very interesting. It's, it's a nice effect, but not really great. However, when you take a photo that is dramatically lit, like this one of a guitarist singing into a microphone that's side lit, suddenly the effect when applied looks very cool. And when you take this other uh, photograph of this uh, guy standing on the stage listening to the audience, suddenly when you apply the effect, it looks wonderful because he's backlit with a spotlight. So what you want to start with is a dramatically lit photograph to give you to give this effect the best starting place to work from. So with that out of the way, let me get to the other caveats that I got to tell you. Uh, number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of these effects may not work as expected. And second, I'm using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with that out of the way, and with the understanding that you must begin with a dramatically lit photograph, let's begin. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to hit control N on the keyboard to bring up the new image dialog box. And uh, we're going to name this, um, let's call it uh, uh, grunge rock poster effect because that's what we're making. Uh, the width is going to be 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels, 150 pixels per inch resolution. RGB color, 8-bit background, doesn't matter. We're going to be covering it with our dramatically lit photograph. Uh, working RGB is going to be Adobe RGB 1998 and square pixels. Hit create and we're ready to begin. Now once again, you want to start with a dramatically lit photograph. Okay, and I have links to all the photographs that I'm using in the description below. So if you want to follow along with one of those, feel free. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do now is drag and drop from my other my other uh, monitor uh, the actual photo that I'm going to be using. Now you can uh, do the same thing. You drag and drop, and there it is. Resize it to fill the image like so, and you know move it around to wherever you think it might look best. Uh, I want to make sure that I have all of this. There we go. Hit enter and you now have your image. Now, I have all imported images like the one that I just brought in here. Uh, I have a setting here in Photoshop that will automatically turn those layers into smart layers. Okay, a smart object. So that's what you see right here over here. See, it says smart object thumbnail. It's called singer and guitarist because it's a singer and guitarist. But you can see, you can tell that it's different from a regular uh, layer because a regular layer does not have that little square button here on the lower right hand side like this one does. So uh, the, the, there is a setting that you can put in your preferences that will turn everything that you bring into Photoshop into a smart uh, object. Now what I do is I go up here to edit, I go down here to preferences, to general, and right over here under general it says always create smart objects when placing. So when you're going to place something or when you drag and drop something into your artwork, it will automatically be a smart object layer. That makes uh, things a lot easier for you because you won't be destroying the actual data of the images that you bring in you'll only be uh, affecting the smart object, which means that the original is always safe. That's the way that I like to do it. If you like to do that, uh, then you can go to Preferences General and check on this little box. If not, then ignore this part. Uh, and all you have to do then is right click on the layer and go over here to Convert to Smart Object and that will convert each layer that you want to turn into a smart object into a smart object. Okay, once you have that done, you just need to duplicate this layer two times. So let's hit control J and control J again and you now have three layers of the same smart object. Now for simplicity's sake here I'm going to rename these layers as layer one, layer two, and layer three. 
You don't have to, of course, but this does make it a lot easier to follow along with the tutorial. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hide the top two layers here, keeping the bottom layer number one. We don't need background anymore, so we're going to get rid of it by just dragging it down to the garbage. Uh, and now on this first one, we're going to bring up our levels adjustment. Okay, and the way that we do that is you hit Control L on the keyboard, and that will bring up the layers adjustment, uh, the levels adjustment. And all we want to do here is under preset, you want to go down here and you want to change this to lighten shadows right there because we want to brighten up those shadows. Now, it does tend to destroy the photo a little bit, but that's okay because the effect that we're going to put on here, the grungy effect, depends on being able to see the shadows because pure blacks just get wasted with this effect. So light and shadows is good. And then if after experimenting with this, you decide that you want to brighten them even more or bring up a little bit more contrast, feel free to play with this. But for now, light and shadows should work with 90% of the photos that you want to do this effect to. Hit OK and you have your very first smart filter. The next thing that we're going to do is we need to add a wind effect. If you've never used the wind effect, it's a pretty one note effect. But sometimes, as in this case, it's a very useful effect to use. So let's go up here to filter. Let's go to uh, render. And then, uh, well, not render, I'm sorry, stylize. And then down here to wind. Okay, and once you see wind, you can see that it all it really does is it looks like a, a comb is being dragged through slightly wet paint of the photograph or, or image. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to make it stagger, which is the... the messiest looking one and then you want to go from the left okay so it's coming in from the left side of our image and dragging across towards the right and that's all that you want to do there you hit OK and it will do this now this will sound weird but you want to do that two more times and the way that you can do that is you can go up here back to filter and then go back to uh, to stylize and then to wind again or you can see up here alt control and F will give you the same uh, filter applied again so let's hit alt control and F and it will do it again and we just want to keep the same setting so stagger and from the left hit OK and then we want to do it again alt control F and stagger from the left hit OK once we are done with that we are done. We can leave that alone. The next thing that we want to do is we want to unhide layer two or the second from the top. Uh, and then all that we need to do here is go up to uh, layer mode here and you want to change that to vivid light like so. And you've already got a very cool looking effect. But wait, there's one more layer to work with up here. So let's click on that layer. Let's unhide that layer. And what we're going to do here is we're going to change this also to vivid light. So layer mode to vivid light. We're going to change its opacity here to 50% like so. And then what we're going to do is do one filter to this layer. And we're going to go up here to filter. We're going to go to filter gallery. And then what we are going to do is we are going to go down here to uh, graphic pen. Okay, right here, graphic pen. And we want the stroke length, and graphic pen can be found, I'm sorry, under sketch. So sketch, graphic pen, and you want to go to stroke length of 15, and you want to go to uh, light dark balance of 50, and stroke direction is horizontal. As you can see, that makes it look like it was done with a pen being dragged across from left to right. Hit OK, and you now have a very cool grunge rock poster effect in Photoshop with three layers, three smart object layers, I should say, and no real work on your part. This is all simply done with smart layer, uh, smart object filters. Simple, easy, and very dramatic. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.